Hello there and welcome. My name is Linda and this is my channel Linda T70. It's really good to have your company today. Um, thank you if you're a returning viewer and if you are new, um, nice to meet you. Hope you'll stick around and watch more of my videos. Um, I suppose my videos come under the banner lifestyle. Um, so I do lifestyle, I do a lot of chatting, I do some shopping hauls. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So um, if that's your cup of tea, it'd be nice to see you again. Um, right, so thank you first of all to all my lovely commenters who, so many of you, wished me a happy birthday this week and I really do appreciate it. I didn't think, of course I told you it's my birthday, but I, I, I didn't do it with the, um, you know, the, the, the goal of having so many birthday wishes sent to me but i got loads and loads and loads so thank you so much it's really kind of you had quite a good week this week um tuesday was my actual birthday and um uh, it wasn't a, not a raving day or anything current husband said about going out for, for dinner in the evening but i said oh perhaps we'll do something like that at the weekend because he works till quite late probably because he can't stand to be in the same room as me for too long i don't know and um <laughs> Uh, but my daughter and my son were here and one of my friends was here so uh, that that was very nice and um, yes yeah, so I had I had a very good birthday um, this was also the week where my son has now departed these these uh, these premises and I've passed on your good wishes <laughs> he thinks it's quite amusing that that I speak to people and that they all you know I tell um, you know I I don't tell you all his business but I've told you he's moving out and that you're all saying or lots of you are saying oh good luck hope everything goes well but he does he does appreciate that so thank you and I do as well just the sort of the fact that you're all so nice and kind it's just lovely um we had quite a good day yesterday actually the day yesterday was the moving day where he got the keys to the property and um, so we went shopping. He wanted my expertise on buying sheets and things, I think. Um, but it's it, funny because we, we went to Dunelm. I mean, I, if you've been watching my recent videos, you'll know that I'm, I've been in Dunelm so much lately for various projects I've been doing that um, they're probably going to name a, 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 one of their sets of crockery after me or something um but uh he managed to get everything he got and he said you know actually i'm quite enjoying this because he's never done anything like that before he's been uh, you know he's a grown-up <laughs> and he's uh, lived in houses with stuff but i think it, he's probably uh, you know his his wife would have bought all that sort of thing um i don't know i i don't think he's ever really taken very much interest in uh towels or the uh the, the, the uh, thread count on sheets or anything like that but it's all a different world for him now but um yeah so that was exciting uh, we did had to do tri two trips because our the, the Dunelm we have is in a shopping center which is all right but if you want to buy big things it's a bit difficult getting them back to your car um if your if your Dunelm is an out of you know like on a retail park you just wheel the trolley to your car don't you but it's all a bit of a Faffy hoofy, new word, faffy hoofy. So um, we had to do two trips. So he did all the bedding and li linens and whatever first, and then came back for all the, the the fun stuff, you know, the crockery and the mug. If you can call that fun stuff. But anyway, I enjoyed myself. But honestly, I was absolutely knackered when we'd finished. Um, and then yesterday, uh, this was yesterday, and yesterday evening, my daughter asked me to go and uh, with her when she was taking her son round a prospective school for his secondary secondary school and um, she's been to quite a few schools already and the, the point of difference with her is that she'll be moving so she's she's not very, moving very far away from where we are now she literally lives around the corner at the moment um, and when she moves she'll probably be about I don't know what it is six or seven miles away something like that not very far um, but it's going to be a different school area, so he's going to look around schools kind of blind, really. Well, not blind, but you know they're looking at schools they, they don't really have any knowledge of from people they know. So that's difficult. But I did go to the school last night with her, um, and uh, I, do, I was just, you know, you do, don't you? You walk around these places, and all, all the um, 
all the fun kids are the ones that take you around and show you this is the science block and this is where we do um, experiments and this is where the cookery is and they're all on their best behaviour and you've got all the nice the exercise books out with all the kids that have got the best writing and actually get all the ticks um, and uh, <laughs> I don't know you it, it's just it's, it's, it takes you right back and that sort of thing of being in a school like an, a secondary school because and I don't suppose I've been in a secondary school till my since my my children left secondary school which is probably in the 90s yeah 90s um but anyway we had a good look around that and um they also put on experiments like they the physics teacher um showed us well actually fun fact for you all uh, perhaps me and my daughter were the only people that didn't know this but they were they were doing something which was making a, an explosion I have to add a small explosion, you know, but it was obviously to entertain the um, the, the parents, the prospective children and parents. Um, and he said, have you all got this in your cupboards at home and brought out a packet of um, icing sugar? Now, I'm not sure what people in other countries call icing sugar, but it's the stuff that um, it's like a powder and um, you make icing with it butter icing and things so if you you might call it something different I don't know um and he said have you ever noticed on the back of it there's a, a sign that says explosives and of course I will no and um he literally set fire to a little cup of icing sugar under proper um safety circumstances I'm not you know we were we didn't have our eyebrows singed or anything but honest to God, it, I mean, it, it, well, I wouldn't say it exploded, but it made a noise and the flames, I thought, my God, I'm looking at icing sugar in a new light. So if, if ever you're lighting a match near your packet of icing sugar, just don't do it. It's dangerous. Um, but that was interesting. I thought every day is literally, every day is a school day, isn't it? But um, yeah, so that, that was quite interesting. But I tell you, by the end of that, I was, I was absolutely knackered and my, my hip and back was aching. Which brings me on to what I thought I'd talk about today, other than that old stuff that I've just given you. Um, I thought to do like a sort of a health um, video because uh, it's all in my mind at the moment because there's various things going on with people I know or people I've been talking to with, with you know, some folk got health issues. And, and basically when you get to my age, which is now I'm 71, um, you know, you get all sorts of things, so you just wear and tear and, um, you know, this aches or that hurts a bit, or you might get a bit of arthritis or something. And this stuff all sort of sneaks up on you. But I thought I'd just tell you a couple of little stories about my health history. And, I mean, this is nothing um, sad or, you know, I'm not telling you terrible stories, but it's, it's just a couple of things that have happened to me, which I kind of think are a bit amusing in a way, but also a bit bit odd because I've I've been misdiagnosed with one or two things in my time and I just don't know how it's happened to me so many times so I'll start with the very first thing and that they're they're kind of odd stories so you know you might want to fast forward them I don't know so the first thing started about I would say about 30 years ago 35 years ago and I used to wear fancy shoes in those days and basically I got a really um, I got a, a corn or a blister, some sort of thing on my toe, which was agony and it wouldn't go away. And at the time I worked um, in a shop and I was on my feet and it was, honestly, it was agonising. So in the end, I decided it, it wouldn't heal. I used to put bandages on it and, you know, plasters and things and it wouldn't heal. So in the end, I thought, well, I'm going to have to go and get somebody to look at this. So I found a um, chiropodist which they call podiatrists now, don't they? But I think, I gather they're the same thing. And um, so, and she she was quite well reviewed and everything. So people, people you know, thought she was, she was good at what she did. So I went to her and um, anyway, she's messed about with my toe and she, basically she, she did cause it to heal. So I can't remember what she did with it. But, you know, she um, must have cleaned it out and done whatever people do to people's corns or blisters or whatever they are. And um, but she noticed at the time that my B12 
big toe on my right foot wouldn't bend properly and she said and, and I'd noticed that something was wrong with my toe because every time I tried to wear a heel my toe was sore afterwards so nothing to do with the um, the corn come blister thing but this was a separate thing but I had noticed my feet would really ache if I'd worn any high heels the next day and she said to me I think what you've done is at some point you've dropped something on your toe and it's probably hurt your toe you know you've you know, it's it's been painful when it, it's happened but you've you know it's healed up and the joint on in your big toe has kind of fused a bit so it won't bend so much and I thought mm, well maybe I've done that because I walk around I, I have always walked around the house and outside sometimes with bare feet I don't quite know why my mother used to do it one of those odd things that you inherit I suppose um, and so I'm always bashing my toes and you know catching them on things um, but I don't really wear slippers much I just have bare feet and um, so I thought well that kind of I can understand that might happen anyway so my toe got better didn't really give it much thought until probably about 35 years later when I started getting pain in the top of my leg and down my leg but like a sort of an, an, a real ache not like shooting pains or anything and what I genuinely thought had happened was that I had been over these intervening years because my toe wasn't bending properly my gait wasn't right so so when my toe my you know you sort of walk like this and I think I was kind of walking a bit more like that so to me it made sense that um, I would it would it would affect over time affect my joints especially when you get older and people get all sorts of other you know your bones aren't so great and your joints aren't so great anyway so I put up with this for ages and ages and ages and it got worse and worse and worse this pain and I thought I think what I need to do is to go to a um, like a physio person and get them to correct how I'm walking or maybe I need an insole or something like that so I eventually I, it was something I just didn't get around to for ages but I did eventually and um, I went to see this I went to a, a I paid for the treatment because you, you don't really get this sort of treatment on the National Health Service and um, this lady examined me and she said you need your hip replaced and I sort of, I said, well, I thought it was just a question of me, um, you know, having some sort of correction on the way I walk. She said, no, no, you've got um, osteoarthritis. No, is it osteoarthritis or the other one? It's not the one where you've got crumbly bones. It's just arthritis in your hip. And um, you need a hip replacement. It's, it's that bad. And I thought, because I'd been... You know, getting up and doing the stuff you do all the time, getting up and out of the chair and going, oh, you know, but not really thinking too much of it. And walking my dogs, I was finding that more and more difficult to do. She said, you need to go to your GP and you need to get referred for a hip, replace, a hip replacement. Now, this was just before COVID struck. Um, so I did. I went to my doctor and he agreed. And I was very, very, very fortunate um, I had in January 2020, so just weeks before we had lockdown, I had um, a hip, on the NHS I had a hip replacement um, operation and I can't tell you how pleased, how grateful I was to that woman because that made all the difference. Now I've still got a funny old toe but um, it was going to her for that with the knock-on effect that she realised and how she knew just by, you know, feet, well, I suppose it's what their job is, isn't it? They sort of feel and prod, prod you around. So um, I had that, so that was that was really brilliant. I had that pain sorted out. And, you know, from the moment the I woke up from the operation, I had no pain. And anyone who's had this operation, or been lucky enough to have it, will tell you the same thing. It's amazing. So. That was the first sort of odd thing, that kind of knock-on odd thing. The second thing I had was a bit of, 
I, you know, people sort of like to put the fear of God into you, don't they? When I left work, um, I decided I'd go and get this. Well, I was actually made redundant from my job. So it was, I left work before my retiring, retirement age. And um, I thought, well, I've got some redundancy money and stuff. And I thought I'll, I'll, just, I'll just start making some sort of appointments to get myself checked out for different things. And I decided to have a an eye test. Now I'd always worn, well, for, for a couple of years, I'd worn reading, those reading glasses you buy from the chemist. Um, I had had an eye test once before that and they'd said to me that those read readers were fine. I didn't need to go, you know, to have anything else done. But as a, a time had passed, I thought I'll go and get them checked again. Anyway, so that was fine. And my mother wore glasses and my dad did for, didn't all the time, but you know, people wear glasses when they get old. So I, I fully appreciated that I probably would have to wear them one day. And um, anyway, he's this this uh, optician was examining me and doing all the little puffing on your eyeball with the little puffy thing and looking at the you know all the stuff that you get done. And then he was like, oh, he's sort of making these noises, and he's he suddenly got his tone changed completely, and he said to me, "You need to, and and I can't remember his exact words, but he put the fear of God into me because his tone changed and he sounded a little bit anxious well very anxious he said you need to go to the um to the doctor you need to get referred to the eye hospital because you've got glaucoma and I thought I mean I've heard of glaucoma I didn't know what it is I still don't really know what it is but he said and I said oh what's that and he probably gave me a rough idea and a, a, a potentially you can lose your sight if it's not checked now there will be a few, lots of you out there probably watching this or listening to me who are fully aware of what glaucoma is and you'll be saying to me, oh, no, no, it's this, this, this. But the point is, the point of my little t telling you this is at that moment in time, he put he really frightened me. So it was go get go and see your doctor, um, go and get checked out. He said, I suggest you get go to Moorfields Eye Hospital in London. So then started a whole... Um, I was really worried and I got home and I was googling it on the google you know trying to find out what this was and I hadn't had any sort of symptoms of anything apart from you know when you look look at tiny print and you can't see it very well and then you put your little reading glasses on and you can see it that was it and that's what millions of people do every day don't they and um, so then started that. So I went to my doctor and I got a referral and then I started going to for all these appointments and having this test and that test. And then at the end of that, which, you know, a couple of um, sessions I had with a with with a, a specialist and they said, well, there's nothing wrong with your eyes apart from just, you know, the usual old getting older and you need will need glasses in the future. He said, I don't know what this optician was talking about. And I thought. Well, so I'd been put in fear of something for a period of time with absolutely no re no justification for it. Anyway, I do get my, um, I'm doing a test now actually, I do get my eyes checked on a regular basis now. So, um, and as far as I know, last time I was told, it, I have that, is it is it called macular degeneration where you just kind of, you know, you do need to protect your eyes from the sun. But this is a sort of relatively recent thing. And I th I don't think it's anything different to millions of other people. So, yeah. And that that actual optician is still in the opticians that I went into those, all those years ago. It was 2011. That's how long ago it was. And um, I think he would blimey. Is he sending everyone off to Moorfield? Um, the... Next thing I had was um, I went to the doctors about something a few years ago, maybe about um, six six years ago, something like that. And um, I can't remember. I think it was I had a pain in my side, and my my dear sister-in-law had not long died from. Um, she was a non-smoker, but she died of lung cancer, and. Um, and she was younger than me, and I remember her t talking about how she'd not been ill and, you know, all this stuff. 
and um, telling me a few of the symptoms. And, and then she sadly she died relatively quickly. And um, I started to get a pain in my in my sort of back of my ribs. And I was thinking, oh, that's it, that's me. Because we'd spent a lot of our youth together. Um, we were sisters in, we were married to brothers and we used to socialise a lot together. And uh, so we'd go to pubs on Saturdays and Fridays or Sunday, you know, several times a week because everyone did and everyone, we, none of us smoked, but lots of other people did. And you'd always come out smelling of cigarette smoke, um, you know, and we'd go to clubs and we, you know, we, we used to have quite a good time when we were young. And um, so I, I genuinely thought I'd got the same as her. So um, I went to the doctor's and he checked me out and he said there wasn't anything to worry about and he gave me some painkillers for this particular pain explained what he thought the pain was and it was fortunately nothing sinister but as a result of that he said to me oh you haven't had a one of your you're entitled to a, a like a health check when you get to a certain age and you've not had that and i mean i don't really try, i try not to go to the doctors really because when you look like me, the first thing they say is, well, you need to lose five stone. Um, and, you know, and how many alcohol units do you have a, a week? And, of course, you halve it and then you halve it again, don't you? But, you know, I like my wine, I like a glass of wine, and I like to eat stuff. So, so I'm always getting told off. So anyway, they said, well, you're, you're due this test, so you make an appointment with the nurse. So I thought, oh. So I did. And as... One of part of that, um, one of the things that I'd had going on for since the beginning of my menopause was um, palpitations, heart palpitations. And I just put it down to my menopause, which I, I know it's a, a thing. I might have mentioned this in videos before. Um, and um, but they seemed a little bit, but I suppose because I was that much older, they just seemed to sort of think, oh, well, perhaps we'll give you a, um, an ECG while we're, we're doing this check so um that's due that's what happened so the nurse she gave me this this check she told me i was too fat um and oh, I, and you feel like saying yeah i know you're not telling me anything i don't know here um but anyway um and then she did the ecg so you know if most of you probably had something similarly they stick these things on you and um, she looked at the readout, and you try and look at their face, don't you, and see if they're if they're going, oh, this is good, or oh, like that. Um, and she was kind of in between, really. And she said to me, okay, well, what I need to do is I need to show this to one of the doctors, and uh, would you go and sit and wait in reception? And I thought, that's a bit odd. And um, anyway, so... Then she came up, She, I waited in reception, she came back up to me and she said, oh, you need to make an appointment to see one of the doctors or see doctor so-and-so um, as soon as possible. Well, you don't really like that, do you? You don't want them to say that sort of thing to you. So I did. And when I went to see the doctor, they did, and he did another ECG. And uh, no, 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 I'm lying. He didn't do an ECG, but he looked, he looked at me at this result you know the readout thing which was on a computer screen by then um and he was looking at all this and he says yes it looks like you've had a heart attack and i'm thinking i don't remember having a heart attack and he said well it very much looks like it and i i thought to, i i was thinking to myself because i'm i'm aware that women's heart attacks are different to men's because I, I gather that me, mainly men sort of go Ugh! or you know their arm hurts or something but I, I think it, you have different symptoms but I don't know what those I didn't know what those symptoms were and I'm thinking well perhaps perhaps I have perhaps I have and I'm thinking about the times when I've got the palpitations and everything I thought, well, maybe that was a heart attack. So they said, well, right, well, we need to get you seen to as, as soon as we can, and we need to get you checked. So I don't know if it's quite the same now. I think it probably is, but they sent the hospital, the doctor sent me a letter um, with a choice of hospitals to go to to have, have further checks on this potential heart attack. And of course, all this time, I'm absolutely beside myself. 
it was far worse than being told you might be going blind um, or that you've got a funny toe. It was because you think, well, you know, if your heart goes, you got haven't got any choice, have you? That's it. So um, anyway, so I got the letter and it gave me all these choices of hospitals near me and one of them was Harefield Hospital which is a, um, a heart, I don't know what you call it, it's known for its heart surgery, they've done transplants there, people, I know, you know, my ex-father-in-law had a bi had bypass surgery there years ago um, and, I, and it's only, I don't know, a few miles from me, five or six, seven miles, something like that from where I live, so I put that down because I thought if anyone's going to know about hearts, it's going to be Harefield Hospital. Um, Probably a lot of you would have heard of Harefield. I don't know whether it's still got the reputation it did, but it's, you know, it's always had a good reputation. Um, so, um, luckily, I got my appointment there and didn't have to wait very long. And I went into, before I saw the consultant, I went to have another ECG. And um, I went into this cubicle with a nurse and... Um, she, she put all these things on and she went, oh, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, <laughs> they're not going to let me home. And she said, um, wh why are you here? <laughs> I said, well, I've been told that I've had a heart attack. So I've been sent here to, to check this out and see if I need, you know, what, what, what to do in, for future treatment. And she said, well, it doesn't look to me like you've ever had a heart attack. So that kind of heartened me, oh heartened, no pun intended, that heartened me a bit. So um, then I went off to queue up to see the consultant and with my little bit of readout, which he would have already had some on, on his screen when I got to him. And um, he looked at this and um, he was a professor something or other. And as I say, I'm a, one of the world's, probably the world's leading heart hospitals. Um, and he said, I don't know quite why you've been sent here. I can't see anything wrong with your readout. You haven't had a heart attack. I can't see anything that would indicate that. And um, he said, I think what's happened is when you were given your ECG in the, by the nurse in the doctor's surgery, now bearing in mind, I'm not, I'm not um, dissing surgery nurses because of course they do a fantastic job but I, I don't know how many of these things are sort of you know, it, maybe they, they're given too many things to do and don't specialize enough in everything and that's not their fault because we know what the health service is like and what strains and constraints they're under but he said I think what she's done is she's stuck the little things the sticky things in the wrong place on you and I'm thinking, <laughs> anyway, so he said, I'm completely happy that you have not got a problem with your heart and the palpitations thing is just a wear and tear thing and you can have a medication if it, if it bothers you, you can have medication to settle that down, um, you know, you can think about that, I don't, you don't have to have that, so, um, I, honest to God, I was so pleased because, you know, I was I was almost writing my will and telling my children I loved them, you know, for the last time. Um, and um, so, yeah, so, um, sorry, I'm losing my thread a bit here. Um, so, yes, after that, um, what these, I got a letter from the hospital confirming all that, which you get a, a copy and your doctor gets a copy. And they said... Um, in this he wrote, the consultant wrote to the GP, um, if, if you would like to have, oh no, no, that was a separate thing. So he said about, you know, I don't see any anything wrong with this. If she wants to take a course of beta blockers, a low dose of beta blockers, she's, she can do, but I'm quite happy to discharge her. Um, the, as a, a follow-up thing though, my doctor suggested I had a, um, I can't remember whether this came before that or after it, I think after it, um, gave me, a, I bought one of those monitors for 24 hours, so I was looked after well, I'm not complaining about that, just this bloody nurse at the doctor's surgery gave me the, 
put the oh well like I say the fright of my life um and um so I did wear a heart monitor for 24 hours and they said you know nothing other than if they want if I wanted to take beta blockers I can but that was fine so that's what I do now I just take a course I take two beta blockers a day I gather they're a low dose and um I've, I've sort of missed taking them for every every now and again and you know it's not I've not had any adverse effects but I do try and remember to take them on a daily basis so yeah so that was me having not having a heart attack oh and the last thing to tell you I don't know if this this is going on for hours this video <laughs> they usually do don't they but the um I had um I've never really suffered with too much tummy pain or anything other than like you know usual period pains and all that um but uh, since this heart thing so you know we're probably talking I think it was when Covid was yeah it must have been about 2021 2022 um I got a really bad tummy pain and I couldn't work out what it was because I'd never had anything like it before and it got so bad one morning I woke up with it and it was so bad I really got panicked and I rang 111 is it 111 and so the person I spoke to I tried to cut this story fairly short, uh, said they'd ring my GP and get my surgery and get a, a, a GP that works there to ring me as a, a, a as a priority first thing that morning when the surgery opened, so which they did. So um, they got me to come into the surgery and poked around with my tummy and um, they said, right, we'll do a blood test. I can't find anything too wrong with you, but we'll do a blood test. And yet for us, we can't do, the nurses that do the ECGs, badly, um, don't do blood tests in our surgery. We have to go to our hospital. So I went to the hospital and I didn't go that day because I'd felt a lot better by then. I didn't really have much pain. I wasn't rolling around on the floor or anything. And um, so I went the following day and got this blood test. And then that evening, I had, my friend had been round all day and we'd had lunch together and I'd, I'd had a little bit of a niggle, but nothing bad. And, and I'd not had anything. I'd not had an upset tummy or any other symptoms of anything. And I'd never had this before. Um, and, um, sorry, I've got an itchy nose, isn't it awful? Um, and um, I got a phone call from the surgery about six o'clock when my friend had just gone and I'd missed the call. And the message said, can you ring the surgery as a matter of urgency? If not, you need to go to A&E. And I thought, oh, blimey, <laughs> what's going on now? So I managed to get a hold of the doctor. I rang and she didn't answer and then I did get a hold of her again. And she, she said to me that there'd been some sort of thing on my um, blood test which they were a bit concerned about, but they won't tell you anything. They don't tell you anything much at all. So I, Cohen's husband dropped me off at the hospital and this was, as I say, sort of during the throes of COVID. So he wasn't allowed to stay with me or anything. So you're sat there in the hospital waiting. You don't know what's wrong or anything and you're frightened. And basically they did, eventually I got seen. UK um, NHS hospitals are ran to the rafters all the time we're lucky we get um you know we don't pay for our health service but um you know it does have its restrictions um i eventually got examined by somebody and then i got sent somewhere else and then i got and then i went for a scan they gave me a scan and um i was there into the wee small hours put in this ward completely on my own which was like a sort of a holding place i think for people they weren't sure what to do with them or which department to send them to and then somebody came in to me in the very late at night and said okay we've got the result of your scan and you've got diverticulitis which I didn't know what that i'd heard the word but i didn't know what that was and i do now though and um so they said, well, we're going to keep you in overnight and get some, and give you antibiotics. So they did that. And then the next day they said to me that I'd be discharged and I'd Googled it. I'd gone on the Google and had a look to see what that was. And I and then some and somebody did explain it to me as well. And I thought and I thought it's really odd because I've never had anything, any symptoms, because I gather you can get constipation and upset stomachs and um, lots of pain and lots of this and that. And I'd not had anything like that apart from that for, for like 
12 hours or something. No, I didn't even have the pain for that. Well, I don't know. It wasn't for very long anyway. So um, the next, next day they said they were going to let me go home, which I thought that was great, but I might have to have my camera put up my nether regions. Um, and that was it. Um, and then I was sitting on my bed and somebody has to come around and discharge you. And there were these two junior doctors that came around and they went to every bed. <coughs> I'm sorry. And then they got to my bed and they had a mumble to each other. And they said, they didn't look at me or speak to me. And they said, oh, yes, he's going to come and speak to her. And then they went off to the next person. And I got a bit worried about that. And um, anyway, so... Then they, they went round again and then they came back and he, who I assumed would, would have been the consultant, because somebody had examined me, I forgot to say that, they examined me when I came in. Um, they came back to me and they said, um, I, I just said to them, oh, well, what, you know, what's going on here? And they said, oh, well, um, he, he, I don't think he's going to be able to get to you today, so, um, but, you know, somebody will be in touch with you. And then uh, there was another nice um, junior doctor came around and she spoke to me a bit and she just, she didn't really say anything very much. She just reiterated that I might have to have a, you know, come back for another check in a few weeks time. Um, and I was much better by then. And um, anyway, so I was discharged from hospital and then I was at home the following day and I got a phone call from another hospital talking about my gynecological um, appointment they were trying to make that with me and I said have you got the right person and they, they so gave me my name and date of birth and was was I that person yes well yes you, you're down here to have a, a gynecological um, appointment and I said well I, this is the first I've heard of it no one's mentioned anything about that so then sorry this isn't a very short story is it so um, I made an appointment and I was really confused. So I went to see, again, again, trying to cut some of this story out. I went to see this consultant at, at a hospital who was a gynaecologist. And he was talking to me as though... <coughs> oh, 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 sorry, um, my Dunelm delivery turned up. Um, yeah, and he was talking to me as though... I was some sort of idiot and I said look I don't know what you're talking about we there was a, a his nurse was in the room with us as well and I kept looking at her he was just really rude and I said do you mind not talking to me as though I'm a four-year-old he was just he was just rattling all these things asking me all these questions and I was saying well I don't know I don't even know why I'm here and anyway I spoke to the nurse afterwards and she said he's like that with a lot of women I thought well he's in the wrong job then isn't he and um, so uh, after that ensued a series of tests and what they thought had ha I, uh, was happening was that, that in the, um, the, the uh, scan that I'd had, they'd seen a lump, a growth, and they thought that uh, it would be, it was cancerous, that, that you know, they didn't, none, nobody ever said any of this to me. And I didn't know that it had happened at the hospital. They'd found it at the hospital because nobody told me at the hospital. This was all, no one has said there's something showing up. We think we might have to call you back. No one said anything to me. All I thought was about this diverticulitis, which is controlled by antibiotics. So I was in shock with this. Um, so they'd found this, this, um, this growth and they told me that I had to have my ovaries and my um, fallopian tubes out and then they'd see what would happen after that. And I'm in absolute in a state of shock about this whole thing, I can't tell you. Um, and then they also found some polyps up the old hoo-ha and I had to have those removed. If anyone's ever had that done, I've had that done before, but under general anaesthetic, um, honestly, the worst pain ever. Um, and they, these people actually did try and give me some gas and air to remove them, but it, that was just absolutely hopeless and didn't make any difference at all. Very kind, very nice people they were, but it was just horrible. But that's another thing. Um, so then starts the process of me getting ready for this. They call, they call this operation 
I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying this the right way around, sal, salpingo oophorectomy or the other way around, which is a lovely, lovely phrase, isn't it? Sorry if you can hear my washing machine. Um, and uh, anyway, so had all the tests and everything, all prepared for that. And I thought, well, I didn't think about, no one actually mentioned the cancer thing. But, you know, by then I'd kind of got the gist of it and that's why they wanted to get it done very quickly. So I went into hospital to have that done, um, taken down for surgery and it was going to be a, a keyhole thing. And um, remember going down to surgery, remember waking up after the uh, surgery and, um, <laughs> and somebody's talking to me about the operation, but I didn't really... I couldn't really grasp what they were saying and then <laughs> the following morning I went up to, went to the loo and everything I was walking around I thought well I feel absolutely fine there's no sort of nothing going on below that I needed to be worried about um, I won't go into, into details because you might be eating um, and um, so I thought well, this this isn't too bad and anyway in the afternoon somebody came to to talk to me um, to see if I was ready for discharge or not and they said you and I and I'm look, listening to them talk and I'm thinking well, I don't understand what you're telling me and I said do you mean to say you've not actually done this operation and they said no because well, you were told this when you woke up from the operation last night from the you know from the anaesthetic so I was given all, obviously all the anaesthetic wheeled into the theatre and everything so they'd, they'd had a look round and they'd realised that I didn't have a cancer. And I mean, this is good news. This is good news. But I just, it's just the whole way these things happen to me. Um, it was a fibroid. Now, the fibroid apparently was in a bit of a shifty place. So it's sort of peeking out from behind some stuff. And they said, we didn't remove it because we didn't have the okay from you with the okay the, the thing i'd signed was to have uh, my ovaries and my fallopian tubes taken out and not a fibroid so they wouldn't do it and i did think well why didn't you just ask my next of kin for for permission i thought that's what they were for anywho and so i was discharged from hospital after having all the pre med the anesthetic and everything for an operation but they didn't have to do it because it wasn't that at all i don't know it's just absolutely amazing really isn't it as i say i'm so pleased that i don't didn't have that i've still got the old freddie the fibroid in there still though so they said to me it's up to you whether you have it removed or not well i don't know quite how i make that judgment because no one wants to have surgery do they um, I suppose if I started to, to bleed or something, I would, but I don't know. All very strange. Um, yeah, so that's sort of the weird medical things that have happened to me over the years. Just, I hope it's not too boring. I don't know if this is a boring story or not, but you know, you, you sort of, you think you're absolutely fine. And of course, I'm sitting here today telling you this and... To, as far as I know today, I'm all right. I don't have anything ghastly going on inside me. But we don't know, do we? It could be a different matter in a week or a year's time. We don't know. But, um, you know, as of the, mo the moment, I think I'm okay. Just with the usual stuff that you have going on. Um, so, anyway, that's enough of medical stuff. I don't know if you find that interesting or not, but anyway... Um, so before I go today, <laughs> I will show you, actually, I'll open my little parcel that's just arrived because it's all to do with my kitchen and you've been very, very good uh, letting me know your comments about that and they've mostly been um, positive, so thank you. So I'll just go and get my little box and um, I'll show you what I've got, um, just had delivered. Right, I ordered... I did I tell you I was ordering these? Um, two little lights for my kitchen. Um, I wanted some USB lights because I'm fed up with all the cables. So I ordered a little picture of it because it's just arrived in boxes like this. 
So anyway, I ordered two of them and they were quite expensive. They were £28 each, but I thought, well, if they look... So with these USB style lights, they would look a bit weird, don't they? Oh, look, this one's come on. Can you see? Can you see the lights on? So I know you're thinking, well, that's a bit weird, but it does have a shade, but it's all tangled up in the box. I need to get some scissors, I think. One second. By the way, I did mean to say thank you for the comments about my earrings as well. I've got another long pair in today. It's a bit overkill, I think, with a bit of a blouse that could probably do with an iron and a cardigan. But um, I don't think I've got too many more pairs of dangly earrings to show you. But I just thought I'd put those in today. Um, oh, this is a right old faffaroonie. Um, just going to cut these things off. So, they come packaged... Oh dear. Sorry, sorry. Sort of a double packaging here. So I've got two of them. Oh. Sorry about them being on. I'll try and switch them off a minute. So that's the base with the bulb. And these are the shades. So they're kind they're they look like they're metal. They're sort of smoked glass, I suppose. Now, how do they go on? Do they go that way? Oh, I see. Just Oh, they're cute. I like these. Now, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. But they look like that. So that like that I know there's reflections in here. I'm sorry. But the bulb's actually on. If you can kind of get the Oh my goodness, get the drift of that. So I'll show you those when they're in situ, if you like. Um, and these are the little, little charger -y things, charger things. And I gather that they last for eight hours when you charge them. So, is this, is this a, I don't know, I have to read the instructions. But that's basically what they look like anyway. They look like that. And that, I don't know how bright the light will be, but that's kind of what I wanted. I just want something to sit on the side because we've got under, um, under cupboard lighting, but it's, it's not all that great. So, and I do like to, I usually have just little lamps there um, on the side. Um, but anyway, I will just go and show you also my two chairs, the Noah chairs. They're from Dunelm. Honest to God, Dunelm is my second home at the moment. Um, we bought two new swivel chairs, so I'll show you those and I will say goodbye because I think I've gone on for, for long enough. Um, I hope you found my video a bit interesting. I really will try and do something a bit more, show you, you know, a bit more haul next time. Um, I've, it's just been a couple of weeks where I've had so much to do. Oh, and the other thing I'll show you next week, if, if, you know, if you're interested, well, you can't tell me really, can you? Um, is uh, now my son's gone and I've got two rooms because my, my grandchildren would come every two weeks and um, I suspect that they won't be coming as well they won't because they'll be with him in his flat when they uh, on his weekends but I, I still want to keep my children's room because um, you know my, my granddaughters come and stay sometimes so I need to do that but the other room he that he's vacated I'll show you that because I've got, had a couple of ideas about what to do with it, but I'm not sure. But it's still got some of his personal stuff in it at the moment, so I won't show it to you today. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching this, if you have. <laughs> um, really good to to um, see, you know, have you have you listening to me. Um, I will see you again next week. I'm gonna. It's Friday now, so I'm gonna try and do this. Um, up, upload this this afternoon because I do like to do a Friday and a Tuesday. Um, and um, so I'll do my best to get that. And we've got a quiz tonight, and I had to do the quiz this week as well. So I've been a bit, um, you know, setting the questions. So um, you take care. Um, see you very soon. Hang on if you want to see the chairs. If you don't, I can't understand. If you're still watching at all, you might not be. Um, uh, and I will see you very soon. So bye-bye for now. Take care. Bye. I can't remember if I showed you my new kettle, um, which kind of matches the colour scheme. I got this from Next.
think it was about 40 quid or something. Um, but I quite like that. I might have shown it to you before, I can't remember, honestly, sorry. Right, so this is the light. Now, um, right, so it's got three brightnesses. I'll turn that off because you don't want to be dazzled. But that's kind of what I wanted. I just wanted something little. I'm not, they might not sit here. I'm just doing this to show you. So, yeah, don't know what you think about those. Um, I suppose each to their own. But it's quite difficult to find something just to sit there and be fairly unobtrusive. Um, thanks for watching. I've said all this before, I know, but you take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Honestly, talk about forget your head if it wasn't screwed on. Um, just to show you these chairs, I didn't, did I? What a fool. Uh, these are called Noah and they are 59, uh, 59 pounds each from Dunhill. And we got two of them. And they were self-assembly, but they're really easy to assemble. Um, oh, I can show you my little, one of the things I got for my birthday was um, this cute little acorn. It's a candle and I, don't, I don't, probably won't use it, but I love the little autumnal acorn jar it's in. So yeah, so that's what the chairs are like. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Can you see? Whoa, there we go. That's better, isn't it? All right. See you again soon. Bye.